They got stupid there. Today we got to look at a new premium destroyer, Tier 5 Asian Destroyer, Anshan. Zen Bing on the screen there. Tried out a few different builds. We actually threw Ding Dewey in this thing. It's basically like a Ginyevi, bought by the uh, Chinese Navy, presumably. Bad turret traverse. First game I played in it was with my standard Asian Destroyer build. Uh, Zai Bing, or what's his name? I don't know. Uh, but it's more of a torpedo-focused build, 30-second turret traverse on that ship, and that you feel when you get into close quarters. So, then I put on Ding by accident. Now I I got Twist and Track here, so it's not a Ding Dewey build. Uh, but that one actually felt the best in terms of the ship's performance, because in the slot 2, there's that turret traverse perk. I don't think I've ever really used it on destroyers, but, uh, you know, I, a lot of times you'll put it on like a battleship or a cruiser build, and... Felt really comfortable, and we even threw on the Halloween Russian destroyer commander, uh, Splendento, which his uh, base trait is uh, destroyer turret traverse as well. Got it down to like just under 17 seconds for a 180 turn on those turrets. Much better. This build, just over 20. I think it's 20.7. Manageable. You get in really tight with some close quarter destroyer fights. That might be a disadvantage, especially if we're going against something like... Uh, Mayhan Benson Kid, or you know, any of those American uh, gunboat destroyers that kind of shine close quarters. So that's kind of the main problem with this. Nice speed, though. It's kind of designed like the Ginevi. On paper, it's kind of designed for long range harassment, and it does that quite well. And uh, the AP works quite well at uh, range as well. I'm not going to show you, or you're not going to see it in this game, but I did have like a 21 Citadel match earlier in the Anshan with the AP, and a lot of them were, you know, some of them were against Akuma, who got <laughs> failed platooned in his way into the game, some of them were against a Carrier, but nevertheless, they were longer range shots than just point-blank range, so good performance on AP, HE not too bad, accuracy gets a little wonky at times, but overall the guns feel pretty good on the Anshan, so you got options on your build, I would definitely go more of a gun focus though, and if you have ways to uh, ameliorate the slow turret verse that could be kind of your main priority here we go jumping into this match here now we had two destroyers i spawned in the middle and i was like initially i was going to go south of the big island that i'm actually north of right now uh but because of this gap exists on this side of the map here uh we elected to go up there that allowed us to spot the mid and still get into the cap because there's two destroyers per team well <laughs> that's what there was in the spawn uh but it is two minutes into the game so we're down to the destroyer as is to be expected in 2022's version of World of Warships Legends. Uh, but anyway, that was the thinking on the spawn. We'll go ahead and spot the mid, and then go ahead and get in the cap. Took some damage. We lost about a third of our health so far. Not a particularly great looking start. What do we got here? Two, four, six ships versus three or maybe four here. We got the numerical advantage. Push. Whenever your ships outnumber the enemy on a given flank, you push. That's how this game works. You sit back, like these guys are attempting to do, you lose games. All right, there's a shot there on the Tier 4 Russian, or Tier 5, whatever it is. Mutsuki, uh, he's the guy that we're trying to get rid of here, though. So I'm assuming we got Torps coming in here. Mutsuki, um, you know, pretty hard-hitting Torps, so we want to be respecting those. Go ahead and back up. That'll eliminate those torpedoes a chance to hit us if they are, in fact, coming. And, you know, we just deployed the smoke to disengage. I like to usually, ideally, with these Russians... Uh, when we do deploy a smoke, it's kind of like the Americans. You want to be using that offensively. All right, but here, I was thinking on the map, I'm still probably protected from the north. And Exeter, low, dangerous ship. He was sprung from his uh, smoke for whatever reason. So I'm trying to do damage on him. You can see he's dueling guys to the south, and it wasn't likely, uh, at least quickly, that he would begin uh, sending shots here. I'm trying, kind of losing track of where I am, though. You can see we're backing up. I'm trying to maneuver the guns and... Uh, Maybe even going on the other side of the ship. But now that the guys from the north are uh, shooting us, we got to pull forward. We're using this island kind of as our shield or our armor this game. Okay, so we drop spot here. We got some shots in the Tennessee. Again, we're kind of just trying to support here. Um, we're actually capturing the base a little bit here, but not quite expecting uh, anything. In fact, I'm kind of hoping my team's going to reinforce here because me versus these guys point blank range like if i went going around this island to attack these guys they'd kill me very quickly bunch of ships shooting you point blank range in the destroyer especially a highly visible one 
uh, like this, your game's going to end very quickly. So peppering the Tennessee here, getting some fires, and just kind of waiting for the play to develop. Now these, like the Russian destroyers, the guns on these, you have the advantage long range, especially against destroyers. Uh, whereas we kind of talked about and alluded to earlier, closer range, generally the Americans are going to have the better of the fight here. So keep that in mind when you're squaring off against those type of destroyers. Peter coming around here. We got the big Peter poking its way towards us. And of course that's uncomfortable to be in. So we're going to try and get him with the torpedoes. Keeping an eye on the map here, expecting other guys to potentially swing around. I'm thinking destroyer or maybe one of those cruisers. You can see the destroyer hanging on the back edge of the cap there but here comes Katowski and he's looking for a little bit of revenge and he's going to go ahead and try and take us out here keep an eye on the map though looks like he's broadside Peter 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 whacked dev strike he gone Katowski takes a nice whack from our team and boom take it away little John Enemy cruiser sunk. we've got two of them what we've got two of them what we've got two of them okay Thank you, Little John. Little John's appearance brought to you by Bull Bites. Bull Bites bite into the bowl. <laughs> All right, jumping back in the match here. Now we're waiting for the torpedo reload. We got nice advantage all of a sudden. This flank was looking fairly stalemated, but we were able to counter the Peter and the cruiser. Now I'm thinking, can we get a double-double leading into a Kraken? That'd be a decent game. One for the ages, in fact. So that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. I'm hoping... We're going to need a little help from the Mutsuki, though. He's got to push in aggressively. New Mexico, I'm trying to time it. Don't want to get shot here. we got less than half our HP at this point in time. Now, we're up pretty big, but scoring-wise, they've had a cab advantage. So if they sink a couple ships here, this thing can catch up pretty quickly, and they can even potentially take the lead. So I always caution players, don't be too focused on, oh, we got more ships than them. If you're going to be adopting that mentality, you for sure got to be locking your guns, scan your own team's health, scan the enemy team's health, confirm that you actually have a team HP advantage. That's what matters, not the ship count. Ship count can change very quickly. Mutsuki, unfortunately for us, disengaging. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and chase him down. There's some shots and a uh, kill shot, in fact, in the New Mexico, but no double-double. Still wanting the Kraken, though. Hoping to time this, okay? These guys are all finally pushing in this, and... Textbook play 100% dictates destroyer and frankly everybody else here capture this base. Okay, but I'm at this point in time I'm getting a little greedy too. Okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to I'm still going to try and capture the base, uh, but I'm trying to maintain the speed. Unfortunately, I think this guy up north here couldn't be bothered. Okay, uh, this is a problem for us in terms of scoring. We're losing about 300 uh, XP each, whatever it is. Uh, look at that. We've Captured the base and he got off right at the buzzer. That's unfortunate. Uh, so we lose points there. Uh, we lose prestige and reputation takes a hit, of course, because it's a bad play. You always want to capture the base. So luckily our team behind us is going to capture the base, but kind of a black eye and an otherwise pretty good game. Uh, you would like to get that uh, base captured. But again, we're going for bigger style points. We want the Kraken. And there's the Mutsuki here. Uh, now we got to be a little careful here. We got to assume torpedoes. I've been keeping an eye on this as we're approaching them on the fact that we're located. And for those of you guys that are new or you haven't experimented with this perk, uh, the twist and track, that little half moon, the white thing uh, right above the aim, uh, that's telling me the rough location of the closest ship on their team. He's got the same perk, and currently I am that closest uh, ship to him. So whenever it says located like that uh, in white, that's what is occurring you're being located by that which shows us the approximate uh, position of you to that particular ship only okay uh, that's opposed to the regular spotting which is gold icons and that's direct line of sight and other mechanics involved so I'm keeping an eye on my twist and track I assumed he was gonna sail off in the sunset all the way to the west uh, but the thing is pointing down south here and I think ooh, vicious shot there from the Tennessee takes him out uh, but he's actually going to go right by uh, that battleship, I believe. Uh, so we're not going to get a chance to get the crack. And Anshan, what do I think about the ship? It's not bad. Played about four or five games in this. You know, I, it's a familiar play style to me. Um, I still, even though these things are designed to be kind of more long range, and if you really want to play it uh, as intended, you'd kind of buff the range, utilize the really uh, fast you know, trajectory travel time on these guns, 
or the shells rather, and just kind of fight ships that way. Distract, use your speed, whatever. That's fine, and if it's done very well, that can be a useful role. Uh, but I still always prefer when I'm the destroyer to kind of play the destroyer role. So in this particular build that I got, which I think works pretty well, we do have the standard Bay Sims on there. That's concealment and additional health. Still trying to counter the destroyers, uh, capture the bases, whatever. You just got to kind of change your approach. But I, as a destroyer player these days where most of the player base isn't trying to win the game, if you're actually trying to win the game, you kind of got to do the roles that you know need to be done. Okay, because it's... If the rest of your team's not going to do them, someone's got to do them. That's you. That's a look at the Anshan for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel. Consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming for you all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all later. Peace.